Yo, salam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to Tani Mu'adh Usman. And today I'm having a conversation with my friend Badith, who's a published author, filmmaker, and content creator on YouTube as well. And side note, le, كل الناس ال ال بيتكلموا عربي وما ما الإنجليزي بتاعهم تعب. معلش. الراجل ده العربي بتاعه تعبان جدا جدا خالص والإنجليزي هو لغته. إذا تحدثت معك بالفصحى. أفهم ولا أتكلم. And since he's a fellow Muslim creator and filmmaker, I wanted to have a chat with him, you know, about his journey, about his published books, and what got him into making videos in the first place, and what got him into writing books as well, and the challenges that face us as young Muslims in this country, and how he perceives it from his own unique point of view, because he was born here, and I immigrated here. So our point of views are very different, but at the same time, we're on the same page on a lot of things. So yeah, enjoy the conversation. I read a comment from someone and they were like, I was worried when you moved to the US. When I saw the first videos, I was worried about you, that you're gonna lose your values and you're gonna lose your Islam. But at the same time, I've seen like, at least this is what they perceive is me uh, being like stronger faith somehow and me like relying on a lot of references that has to do with Quran and to do with Sunnah. And uh, in that comment, they said like, they've noticed the Mu'az is stronger in a way, and he's not really like weaker Islam wise. So the thing that I wanted to ask you about is, what do you think are the challenges that face a lot of, let's say not filmmakers, but Muslims in general in the US? Well, I think it's an interesting observation from your viewer. Firstly, because it shows how a lot of people in the Muslim world see the West and America as a place of no religion. And it's, it's a false perception because there are strong Muslim communities here. And we don't take our religion for granted here. In the Muslim world, everyone's Muslim. So you feel like it's not coming from you, but you're influenced by your environment to be Muslim. But in America, you're not influenced by your environment to be Muslim, and you have to choose to be Muslim every day. So in that regard, there is some challenges as well, because if it's really hard for you, if you feel you need to conform to your environment, then you may lose some of that religion. But for some people, it makes them more confident, it makes them more grounded in their religion because they feel that if I don't practice it, I'm gonna lose it. It's going to be taken from. So it's it's more of you have the freedom of the choice yeah. and you're making the choice because you choose to yeah. have it. And it's not more of a, it's something that's forced on you yeah. by the society or by the community that you're in. And it's more of something that you're choosing to, to do. Filmmaking wise, do you think it's more challenging, especially that you moved here to New York? Was it easier for you like to do small documentaries and vlogs back home or is it easier here? I think it's easier here because when I was in Texas, I really didn't have filmmaking on my mind that much. Um, I kind of just started doing videos because I wanted to tell the stories of the people around me. But nobody really knew what filmmaking was about. When I wanted to make a video, I would have to really explain what I was trying to accomplish. Whereas here in New York, it's more of a natural place to do the, this kind of work. Like everybody knows about content creation. Everybody knows about, you know, film. There's a huge film industry here. You know, there's a lot of new studios opening in New York actually in the, in the next few years. So New York will be rivaling Hollywood. But I think it's more of a natural place and it's more a place where I'm learning instead of me just like learning a little bit online. But I meet people like you who kind of give me pointers, who give me advice who I can take inspiration from. So I think filmmaking in New York is, has been a lot more um, productive for me here. We met at a filmmaking gathering and we made a short film that that was like our first collaboration. Yeah. And that's what I feel like the spirit of New York is like a lot of people are trying to learn and not a lot of people are putting that pressure of oh no, this is like a film and you need to be perfect about it and you need to be, no, everybody is doing it. Everybody has a job, a day job, but at the same time, everyone is dedicated time to their hobby or the, to the thing they're, they're most passionate about. Yeah. Do you think as a Muslim filmmaker, it's it's been challenging here or it's been easy as well, like you were in Texas? 
So in Texas, I was alone, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't really have friends in film. Everyone was doctor or engineer. And um, I didn't have like group, groups and meetups to attend. But here in New York, you have not only groups and meetups to attend, but I'm meeting a lot of Muslim filmmakers. Um, like, you know, we have a group and now it's like, what, seven or eight of us. And we're all like Muslim filmmakers. And it's really exciting to be around these type of people. There is obviously in the film industry a lot of influence, in, negative influence, in terms of stuff that doesn't go with our values. Yeah. But um, there's, there's just so much to do, you know, and especially for me, like I rely a lot upon my own ideas. And, um, you know, obviously if I'm offered a project to work on, it's exciting. But I have, there's so much inspiration I get just by living here that I'm consumed with my own projects and my own stuff that I want to that's, do. That's the fun of it. Like you have so much to do here and it, I feel like whenever like you leave the groundness of your family and that shelter yeah. you you have more time for yourself it's it's fine yeah it's fine to stay with your family it's beautiful but it's that social life becomes dedicated to your hobby so even if you're socializing with people you're socializing with the people that have the same hobby yeah. that want to make films that want to gather to create like talk about books or like the book club that you have or something that has to do with your passion so even when you're dedicating like time for your own thing you have those people and you have like a a plethora of like a huge community that you can talk about yeah. do you feel like you have to bend anything within your religion to keep on doing your job your day job or your your for me, being confident as an American Muslim born and raised here, I don't feel shy to speak up and say what I need to do. And I think for me, thinking about someone coming from a foreign country with all the perceptions they have about America and the West, I could see there being some hesitance about like, oh, they're not going to understand or what if they, you know, they get angry at me, blah, blah, blah. That comes from a place of just not really understanding this country. And if you speak to most American-born Muslims, I think that they're, they're, even if they're not practicing, they would tell you, yeah, if I wanted to, I would ask for it. It's not a big deal. And I'm, like you said, America has freedom. It's, I, know, I know Europe is a little bit less um, allowing of, you know, practicing religion in public. But really, like you said, there's Christians here, there's Jewish people here. There's, this is a country of there's a lot of religious people in America and they understand, you know, you say religion, they're like, I understand, take what you need, take what time you need. So I think people shouldn't be afraid to ask for it. Yeah, I understand like it's capitalism in the end. They want to like make whatever profit they want to and I don't really care about you that much. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like rules and regulations of workplace require your employer to respect that. Yeah. As someone who was born a Muslim here and you visited, like recently visited, and you have a series that's coming up for Ramadan, that's that's why people need to go to your channel and subscribe there. A series that's coming up about visiting uh, different Muslim cities and so on. Do you think it's have been easier for you to be a Muslim here in in the US, for example, and be born here and practice whatever you want here? or? it will be easier for you to move somewhere else. Before the whole Palestine thing, I would say without a doubt, it's easier here for me. Um, it's, it is unfortunate to see how we're in the middle of the country that's financing this war against our own people in Palestine. And in that regard, I know a lot of people are less patriotic nowadays. They're less um, happy to identify as like, I'm an American. They're more like, Yes, I'm an American, but I think um, there are a lot of positives in, in the way that people in this country have responded as well. You know, even in Muslim countries, very few people are happy with their government. You know, I don't want to mention names, but, um, you know, you see the, the sentiment of the public is completely the opposite of the sentiment of the rulers. Yeah. And I think that's what's happening in America. I think. You see massive protests all over this country. You see people boycotting Starbucks, um, all these companies that are supporting Israel. You see people shutting down bridges, shutting down highways. There's a lot of people here who aren't happy. And although our tax dollars do go to the occupation, we're doing all we can to make our voice heard. 
and eventually I think we will see our pressure on our government lead to something. We have hope in America that when we come together and we put pressure, we see results eventually. Whereas other places, they, they're hopeless sometimes. And that's the thing, like the freedom that you get for someone who's coming from Egypt, for example, or someone who's coming from Sudan, the freedom to protest, the freedom to speak your voice against the, the government that leads you, it's, it's limited in a lot of ways. And you would find a lot of pushback from the government legally to shut you down. And even though the community might be 100% with you, they're not standing with you. But the opposite can be said here. Like a lot of people do think like, you can't practice what you want, you can't do whatever you want, you can't pray wherever you, no, you can't, you can pray whatever you want. And like we've said, oh, or like we've seen, like the protests that have been held here uh, to support Palestine have been massive, yeah. mashallah. And the support from non-Muslims have been massive as well. And it's like the good points that you can look at it because a lot of people are sad about what's happening. And I'm sad, obviously, about what's happening and our brothers are dying there and suffering. But uh, some of the good things that have come out from this, um, f like people have seen how horrific the occupation is, how horrific Israel is, how horrific the tax dollars are being spent every day to kill people on air. And they see it on their Instagram, their Facebook, their is and it's, like you don't have a choice but to be against the volume and the amount of bad stuff are happening to people around the world. And I've seen that, you know, firsthand, like a lot of people are converting because they just want, they, they want it to see why are people like still in Palestine? Why are people like, uh, like going through all this hardship and they w went back to their religion and read and like found out they are Muslims and now a lot of people are convinced yeah. converting to Islam which is good mashallah yani. since you've been here and you've dealt with a lot of young folks and old folks do you think like young Muslims uh, have a different better or worse just a different perspectives than their parents and what they grew up on or no yeah definitely I mean parents they the first most clearest one is in terms of um, like finances. Most of the people who came here as immigrants, they worked really hard and they chose careers that even they didn't enjoy it, but it was more about we need to have enough money to raise a family. And now what we're seeing with my generation is we're like, you know, we have enough engineers, we have enough doctors, we want people who can influence society. We need documentary filmmakers, we need writers, we need artists, we need politicians, we need journalists, um, we need more businessmen, entrepreneurs. And only by doing that will we have a greater societal influence. Um, and cr actually, you know, you're seeing a lot of Muslim TV shows coming out. Although I don't personally like them too much. Some of them are a little bit more on the haram side. Um, but I think we need more people in there because then it can be more balanced and give young Muslims more, um, you know, representation in the media. And if you think about it, um, people overseas are watching American media too. When they see Muslims being portrayed in a good way in, in American TV, that's going to influence everyone. Um, so that's the main uh, difference I noticed in my friends and my group with our parents. Um, in terms of religion, I think there's a, there's a different way that people are approaching religion. Um, we have a lot of young Muslims who are becoming scholars in America now. There's institutions, there's madrasas, there's Islamic universities in America where people are studying Islam and graduating and becoming Imams. And their approach is more of, you know, applying Islam to the context we live in here. So a lot of the way that our parents practice religion and they see, you know, their place in the society comes from the way that they learned Islam in other countries. And of course, Islam is unchanged, but the way that it's, it uh, manifests in different places affects it. Um, for example, like the issue you were talking about voting, it's in Muslim countries, some people will say, no, we can't have democracy. But when you're in this society, you grow up in the society, you have to adapt to what's going on here. And so you have Muslim scholars who are approaching this idea of 
how can, how can we influence the government we live in to be better for Muslims in this country? And should we endorse voting? Should we endorse a certain candidate? Uh, what should we tell our people to do? We have to mobilize and we have to ensure the survival of Islam in this society in the West. And not just survival, the growth. We have so many people who are interested in Islam. Um, we All we need to do is reach out to them. And, you know, once we, we have different approaches in terms of how we reach out. We have the Hispanic community, which they, um, much many of them are Catholic, very religious. We come at them with the perspective of, hey, um, you know, Isa he was he's very revered in our religion too. And, you know, when they hear about how we have a whole surah about um, Maryam, um, there's, you know, they're, they're interested and they're curious and they open the Quran. And we have institutions in America, there's one in Houston, which is an Islamic center all in Spanish. They have the khutbas in Spanish. They have the Qur'ans printed in Spanish. They have everything there in Spanish. And then in terms of people down south, we have an approach with them too. We tell them, you know, conservative values um, are present in Islam. And a lot of the stuff, the moral decay you're seeing in the West, that's not, that's not, you know, that shouldn't be allowed. If you are, if you believe in these values, you can notice how Christianity is losing ground. Why don't you join us as Muslims? Because we are upholding these values. And then in terms of other people, maybe liberal Americans, you see the social justice in Islam. You see how we, um, you know, we, rep we support any people who are the downtrodden of society. Um, Islam is all about lifting them up. And we have zakat where we th you think about the poor and we don't want to have people who are just bil making billions and billions of dollars without supporting the poor. So there's so many angles we can approach this context we live in. And so that takes thinking, how can we take our ideas from Islam and present it to the people in this context? All these issues are not really issues in the Muslim world. You don't have to do da'wah as much in the Muslim world. You have to more remind the people and you bring what they already know out again, constant reminders to keep them firm on the deen. So in that regard, you know, there's different approaches, East and West and the younger generation if we just keep thinking in the same way as our parents did, we won't succeed here. Yeah, and it's the same thing when you're talking to the younger generation. Like if you approach them from the same angle of like, this is our society, this is our... No, they want to break free because this is... Like someone said, when you bring your kids to school, they're not your kids anymore. They're the government kids because they're spending more time in school than at, back at home. And they're learning from their peers. They're learning from their community and from the people that they meet. And definitely th those kids are learning from their parents. And so you're bringing that entire society into your house at the end of the day. So if you're approaching like Muslims and young people the same way that you would approach someone who just came here from... East Asia or from Africa or for whatever, they have that society, they have that values of Islam because it's built within their community. It's not gonna be the same as talking to someone who was born here, who had the choice and still has the choice of staying with their religion or giving it up. Because after 18, you go to your college, you are living alone, you're living with your friends. You need to choose after that. Do you wanna like hold on to your religion or do you wanna let it go? You grew up reading a lot of things, uh, Arabic, English, I don't think you're Arabic is that amazing, but <laughs> sweet, sweet. So you're influenced more about like English books. And I've seen like a lot of writers when they do have that influence, they tend to lose their values and, and because they uphold those books and they uphold those writers in a, a very high pedestal, they want to be like them and they want to write books like that. Yeah. So they're usually not Islam oriented, not not oriented about heroes from Islam, what made you choose heroes from Islam and what made you try to write Islamic stories in English? Well, so I'm the oldest with uh, five boys in my family. Mm -hmm. So for me, like our family was always big readers. And, um, you know, I enjoyed reading a lot of the adventure novels in my youth. But as I started to learn a little bit on my own about Islamic history, I saw that there was many stories in our own history that needed to be told especially to a young American audience in English. And so I started writing just to give my brother something to read. Um, and I, I wasn't sure like, you know, who else would read it, but I was like, at least if 
I can make something interesting, engaging, and also educational for my brothers, then that would be a, a, a win for me. So I just started writing. Um, and after I finished, I was like, you know what? I don't want to wait two years for this, you know, apply, apply, apply for to get published traditionally. So I heard about um, self-publishing. So I said, let me just self-publish it. I'll put it on Amazon and I'll see if anybody reads it. And um, Alhamdulillah, like it had a lot of good reviews. Um, I promoted it. I visited Islamic schools, masjids, um, did signings with the kids. Um, a lot of people, even internationally, have read it and left nice reviews. So I think it wasn't it was needed. Um, a lot of people mentioned, like you know, we, my kids never read something that, you know, felt representative of their religion, um, and was still like exciting, adventurous, because kids don't want to read like a, a boring. boring history book or biography or something like that. So Alhamdulillah, I think. There's more to be done in that regard. I'm still working on uh, my third one now and uh, I have plans to continue writing and hopefully inspire other people to also start doing something like this. Inshallah, inshallah. And that's what, what was one of the reasons that made you meet a lot of friends here in New York. For example, Dia. Yeah. Yeah, he read your book and he messaged you and he met you. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this lovely unscripted conversation. Again, you can find links to Beris's books and his YouTube channel down here. And yeah, see you next time, Ajis. How, how, how much do you rate the, the interview right now? Yeah, um, it was great. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. 10 out of 10 out of yeah. 10. Well, now you have to get to work editing it. Yeah, Allah. <laughs> Allah. <laughs> I don't know about that.